Hello my friends, today we are working on Photoshop with this image over here and we will cut out this uh, image from here with its own shadow and we will put it on a plain background and we'll end up with something like that. Then after I will show you how to do that, we will also replace the background with the colors of the brand. So you see here I chose the red from the brand or we can get more creative and end up with something like this. And you can see here that uh, the shadow has no color so we'll, I will show you how to take care of that because sometimes when you shoot an image on a color background the color reflects into the product and you'll end up with the color shadow. So we will take care of that and I will show you how to do all of this starting now. This is the original image and what I want to do, the first thing I want to do is select the subject out of the image. The easier to, way to do that is to go to the object selection tool over here and then you, when you hover over your uh, subject it will automatically select it. So just click on it and then I will mask it. And just like that we cut out the subject from the image. Now we have to cut the shadow. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. I should have done that before. I'm going to delete the mask from the bottom one because this is going to be our shadow. So now we need to select a shadow. For that, I will use the polygonal tool and I will just make sure I select plenty of the shadow and just go like that, make a selection. Oops, just something like that. And then put it on its own layer, go Command J, and that will put it on its own layer. So as you can see, this is our selection where the shadow is. To extract the shadow, the original shadow from this image, we want to go into Select, Color Range. And then here we want to go into Shadows. Now I already have dialed in the settings here because I've done it before, but I'll take you from the beginning to see how it works. I'll take everything to zero. And the first slider you want to work with, make sure you're on grayscale. You want to move the range until you start seeing the shadow a little bit. You see here, I already see a lot of the shadow at 10. So just move back until you see just a little bit of the shadow. I can still see shadow here, six. Six is where I see no shadow. If I move to seven, I can already see a lot of the shadow. So I want to stay just before you start seeing the shadow. So six was good for this one. And then for the fuzziness, increase it until you select all the shadow that you want, but you do not want to see the edges like this. You want to make sure you just get the shadow. So for this image, I think 39 is what I chose and it seemed to work great. So there you go, 39. So now we selected our shadows and click OK. And then with the selection active, we just click on the mask and now we isolated the shadow. So that's our shadow and if we turn down the can, there's the can with the shadow. Now you see what I talked about it, the shadow does have the pink tint because it reflects from the can and the background. So I will show you how to deal with that if you want to put your image on a different color that is not pink or red. This one will work fine for what we're working with because we will put it on a pink background. But uh, I will show you how to deal with that for different color background. For example, if you want to put it on white or blue or something else. So now that we have this, um, uh, we have the shadow and we have the can and we have it on a transparent background, we do want to save this as a PNG file. To do so, let's first optimize it a little bit. So click, uh, hold down command on the Mac and click on this mask of the shadow. So we select it. And then also hold down shift and command and click on the can mask to select that one as well. And you see now we have selected the shadow and the can. And then go onto the crop tool and just crop it so it's optimized so you don't have such a big file. Something like that. And then we can go to file, export. Oops. I have to accept the crop first, so make sure you accept the crop. And then go to File, Export, Export As, and make sure you save it as a PNG. 
And here make sure transparency is checked and then you want to have convert to sRGB if it's for web and then click export. I already have done this so I don't need to do it again. Now I'm going to my original background. This is I took the image on a pink background and I took the image with the product and then I also took an image just of the background by itself. And now we can go to file, place embedded and I will bring in my PNG file which is this one over here. Click place. So now that I have my product, I can resize it if I need to. For this image, I will leave it the way it is. So I will click OK and then I'll go to Command T and I want to change the orientation. And I'm going to put it right here. Click OK. Now to duplicate this can many, many times to fill the page, make sure you go into the Move tool over here and then hold down option where you click and drag and that will duplicate it. So now I can hold down option and I can keep clicking and multiplying the scan and making whatever pattern I want. Now there's something else you should look for. So let's see, this is the pattern we want to do. You see how the light comes from this corner and it goes down this way because of the shadow, the way we have it. I kind of want to do the same thing to the background to represent that light a little bit better. So I will go to the background and then I will create a curve tool. With the curve tool selected, I will bring down the brightness, something like that. And then into the mask, I will use a gradient. And the gradient I will use is this one over here. And this is the black to white. And click OK. So now, however I will drag, it will go from black to white. So I want to hide it from this corner and make it visible in this corner. So I will just drag a gradient, something like that. And you see this way we've made this part brighter and this part darker. If I go before and after, before and after, and that just mimics more the light and just makes it a little bit more believable and natural. Now, what if we want to take this image and put it on a blue background or some other background? Well, we need to make sure that our shadow doesn't have any color in it. So how do we do that? Well, just like before, I will duplicate my layer and from the top layer, I will just go to the object selection and click on the can because we want to select the can. And Photoshop would do its best to select it and then click on the mask and there we have our can. See, this is just the can. Now with the bottom layer, we need to select our shadow and to do so, just like before, we will choose the polygonal tool and I am going to select a big chunk over here. And then I will go Command J to put it on its own layer. And now with this layer selected, I'll go to select and color range and we want to pick our shadows which that looks good we had the selection from before and click ok and then put a mask on it so now we have just what we had before to change the to remove the color from the shadow what i need to do is make a solid color adjustment layer choose black click ok and then take the mask from the shadow and put it onto the black. To do so, I will just hold down option while I drag the mask and that would copy it over there. If I turn this off, you see now we have a can with a shadow that has no color. So just like before, we want to save it as a PNG. To save it as a PNG, first we have to crop it. So I will go to command click to select the shadow and then shift command click on the can mask and now they're both selected and then we'll go to the crop tool and we'll crop it accordingly. Something like that. Make sure all my shadow is selected in there. And that looks good. I will accept the crop. And then we have to save it as a PNG. So we'll go to File, Export, Export As. And we have the PNG settings in there. Go to Export. And then I will name this one Can2. So we know this one 
does not have a color shadow and click save. Great. Now let's create a new document, go to file new and I'll create a new document that I will fill in with the color. And let's see, let's go with blue this time, something like that. Then I can go to file, place embedded and bring in our can that has the, you know, black shadow, just like that. And as you can see, now we have a can with a no color background. Now let's get a little bit more creative with this background. So let's say I am going to make a new, let's take a sample of this color over here, the red. So with the brush tool selected, B for the brush, I'll hold down option and select some of this red and then I'll create a solid color and click OK. And now I want to mask off half of this. So with my polygonal tool, I will go ahead and make a selection straight through the middle, something like that. And then make sure the mask is selected and to fill it with black, which is my foreground color, I'll go to option delete. And now we are hiding this red from this half, command D to deselect. So we have pink and blue. They don't go so well together. We should have picked something else other than blue. Let's go with a different red maybe. So this blue, I want to change it and I will change it to something more. What will it work better? Let's see. Maybe I'll just go with something from the can. White. Maybe we'll get something like that. There you go. Click OK. And I think I want to invert this mask. I want the white on the top. Command I to invert it. And there we have it. Now this can, of course, just like before. Oops. I still have the polygonal tool. Make sure you have the move tool. And then you can place your cans and hold down option to duplicate it. And now we can drag it and create whatever kind of composition we want. Oops. Something like that. And as you can see, you don't need to have a million of the same products. You can just have one and still create good images. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyla Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.